146th Contact, Saturday, the 13th of June 1981, 12.43 am. Billy says today, I once again had all sorts of trouble in reaching you telepathically. Quetzal says I was shielded in an intrablock. Billy says ah, accepted, even though I don't know what this devil's thing is again. Quetzal says an intrablock isn't a device but rather a state between two dimensions. Billy says you still see me, unfortunately, in futile non-understanding. Quetzal says an intrablock is identical to a dematerialized state between two different dimensions, whereby the energy of the dematerialized body remains as an independent energy block in itself, without mixing with the surrounding energy. Billy says aha, now this is understandable. Apparently, the whole thing is connected to time travel. Quetzal says you are sometimes really unbeatable. Billy says you, too, especially with sparse responses. Quetzal says we shouldn't talk about it too much for the time being. You've probably called me in order to obtain my specifications. You have, indeed, given me the consent telepathically. Billy says exactly, that's why I'm here. Quetzal says I am not yet as far along with everything as you would like it. I was only able to work out the reorganization for the night watch. If you content with this. Billy says certainly, that is the most important thing. Quetzal says then listen with regard to these important matters, I would have called you this afternoon to tell you that I have prepared the following pure internal organization affairs, comprising 13 points. 1. With this reorganization, no watch exchanges between different watch practitioners should be allowed anymore. 2. The ending of a watch should be finished in each case at daybreak. 3. The ending of a watch at daybreak should always be replaced by a day watch, which should be mutually taken over by those remaining in the center. 4. In the case of an alternating two-person watch, both watch practitioners have to determine together which person has to carry out the first watch and which one the second. 5. The beginning of a watch is scheduled at 12.00 am for all seven days of the week, and during the exercise of a watch, monitoring tour are to be taken around all buildings as well as in the appropriate surroundings. 6. Those carrying out a watch are further responsible for the oversight of telephone slash heating animals slash sick people snow slash rain garden slash chattels lighting slash etc etc. More exact monitoring activities should be developed by the whole group. 7. In each case, those carrying out a watch should assume their responsibilities in a well-rested state and should fulfill them conscientiously. Therefore, it is appropriate that before the carrying out of the watch, an adequate amount of time is spent sleeping. 8. After 12.00 am, no one should remain outside, unless they are limited in their movements to the area around the house, which includes the parking lot as well as the patio and the house seat and, furthermore, the road space in front of Benedette's housing. 9. Your wife and Eva should alternate in their watch activity from week to week, shifting days with one another. 10. Reorganization of the watch for the inhabitants of the center among whom also Elsie is to be counted. Beginning of the reorganization. 1. Elsie, Saturday 2. Jacobus slash Madeline, Sunday 3. Bernadette slash Connie, Monday 4. Eva, Tuesday 5. Your wife, Wednesday 6. Maria slash Engelbert, Thursday. 11. Other core group members are to be incorporated into this watch activity plan immediately in each case if they are not living in the center but are there for at least one night. After their watch activity, the normal rotation of the watch should be normally continued again by those group members who were consistently in line but who were delayed by the inserted watch. 12. Unfortunately, of the group members living outside of the center, only Roland can be used regularly for one watch per month. But for longer stays in the center, an entire watch falls to him every seventh day. The same rule also applies to Margaret Rose, to Dorit, and to Guido, whereby at least one watch per presence is to be performed, 
beyond which the seven-day period likewise reaches validity. The same regulation also applies to all other group members who live outside of the center, nevertheless, Hana, Ida, Carl, and Sisai are excluded from this. With them, a watch activity in the center isn't possible for various reasons, as I have thoroughly clarified. The watch activity of an individual carrying out a watch should be controlled by a group member responsible for determining this. These are the new regulations for the watch activity in the center. Billy says good, very many thanks. However, I don't agree with one thing, namely that I am once again excluded from watch duty. I definitely want to do my part as well. Quetzal says you know that this would be very dangerous for you and that we, therefore, have to exclude you from it. You, nevertheless, carry out the watch activity every day until midnight, which doesn't exactly serve for your safety, by which you are also disturbed in your nightly workroom activity. Billy says but I don't agree with this. I rebel against your decision, my son, because even after midnight, I can still keep watch here and there. And about my office work, you don't have to worry, because I can still do this, despite all the outside work. Quetzal says if you insist, then it should be. You could take over one or two watch activities at your own discretion, but you would have to pay attention to the fact that the weekdays of the remaining watch practitioners shift weekly. Billy says I get it. Thank you. Then still a concern from me. You heard the complaints of various group members which I reported to you, regarding the visitors and their cooperation. Have you worked out something in this regard? Quetzal says you said that this matter was urgent, so I also worked out something with respect to this, namely the following one. Visitors to the center in any case should adapt themselves into the policy of the center, and it must also be demanded of them that they no longer stay outside after 10.00 p.m. comma except under supervision at permissible places. 2. No longer relevant equals replaced by new visitor regulations, visiting hours on Sundays only the visitors to the center who arrive at the center outside of the established visiting hours so on other days and at other times than on Tuesday evening or on Sunday morning, on who stay longer than 30 minutes should be put to vigorous work in the center, without exception, if extraordinary arrangements are made for these visitors, such as extraordinary and very important arrangements for specific conversations and activities. All those visits that are of a purely private nature, like, for example, Relatives, friends, and family members, etc. are excluded from this, of course. The last point in reference to the watch activity is still important as this is also the case with us. The inhabitants of the center also have the need every now and then to be alone in the middle of the night or after this time for any reason and to walk or think in the nearer or further surroundings of the center. This shouldn't be denied to the inhabitants of the center. Thus, they can, indeed, do this at their free discretion. Nevertheless, their duty is that they inform those carrying out the watch activity of this and also mention their walking direction, destination, time of their absence, as well as the way of return. Billy says that's good. I find it really good. You always think of everything. Quetzal says I thought of this myself because I often feel like wandering through the night. Billy says that's why, at that time, you also ran into Engelbert into the headlights of his car. Quetzal says that wasn't planned. Billy says of course not, you son of the shining robe. He only saw you at that time because your clothing reflected some light even in the murky darkness and, therefore, had glittered. But the world didn't end, right? Quetzal says it was embarrassing that I was so careless. Billy says our, our earth friend just also has eyes in his head. Quetzal says that is of correctness, but now listen, for what I still have to explain to you is important at our last meeting, you spoke of the fact that the fulfillment of a foreign mission isn't possible due to unpleasant circumstances. As a result, I only gave you an evasive answer because I first wanted to fathom those things, all of which you mentioned to me as negative. 
but in the meantime, I have sought a clarification and have come to the conclusion that such a step in spite of everything is of world embracing necessity, for you, as well as for the group members and, above all, for the mission. On the other hand, despite our efforts, we have not succeeded in changing or decisively influencing certain necessary matters, according to which, despite our good results, a mission expansion and the resulting formation of new groups worldwide with great enthusiasm and commitment must, nevertheless, be addressed. Billy says you joking with me. You know, nevertheless, the arguments that I've presented to you, with which you could agree, so to speak. Quetzal says yes, but I couldn't come to a firm decision which is proven to be right. Billy says this is, again, a joy. Quetzal says I will inform you about these matters in more detail when I've worked out more data. Billy says okay, I'm also not eager to have to bother myself with these things. But tell me, my son, when will Semiazza actually come back again, and where is she anyway? Quetzal says until her return, several months could still pass. She is on error. Billy says then let her be greeted quite nicely by all of us, of course also Patar, Manara, Player and the others, of whom something is only seldom to be heard. Quetzal says I am also to give you and all group members very affectionate greetings. Billy says for which we sincerely thank everyone. But one more question the coming world events and the continual fulfillment of the prophecies ever depress me to such an extent that I often become damn furious when I think about the fact that the earth people simply cannot be taught and run unreasonably in their misery. I often heave because of a burning rage and a roaring misery. Is there no way to suppress these outbursts? I myself find no possibility for this. Quetzal says that doesn't just happen with you but also with us. Like us, you are too connected with everything and you love the earth people too much to be able to be indifferent to what is coming. We all know that you have to bear an almost inhuman burden through your knowledge and through some very cruel knowledge of the future, but unfortunately, in fulfilling your mission, neither you nor we can remain spared from this. Like us, you also have to live with the knowledge that the prophecies will fulfill themselves and that they are nearly unchangeable, for only very few people can be instructed by the truth. Only after the course of many centuries will your teaching of truth be considered, only then, when a lot of harm, distress, and misery have rolled over the earth. However, you also know that in your time on earth, you must suffer very hard in various relations, as Emmanuel already explained about two comma three zeros years ago, when he said that the prophet of the modern times would be hated and pursued not only by a nation alone but from all over the world and by all earthly nations. And this time, in which these words come true, has now begun. Now, the time has come, in which you should be destroyed, in order to newly prevent the truth thereby. Traitors from your own former ranks have begun this, and no it tales, one nab great sectarians, misguided and ones, and sham scientists continue the intrigues and destruction business against you and the truth. And now, this will no longer be limited to your native country but will assume global proportions, thus, the prophecy of Emmanuel fulfills itself, which says that you will be hated and persecuted as a prophet of the modern times by the peoples of the whole world. Billy says this doesn't disturb me too much. What bothers me even more is my anger at the irrationality of the earth people and the fact that they run with this irrationality to their doom. Quetzal says love is also capable of anger, especially when one's cognition proves that the offered love is shamefully ignored and defiled in the way that neither attention nor cognition nor compliance is given to the truth offered in love, causing harm to those who, in love and truth, have been made aware of the serious consequences and have been taught them. Billy says I understand, but that doesn't solve my problem. But maybe it also isn't to be solved so I will probably live with the knowledge of things to come, with all atrocities as well as with the knowledge that I can do nothing to help this. Then, with this in mind, I must just simply live and try not to get mad. Quetzal says that is of correctness. 
Billy says then I would rather go now and thoroughly ponder this fact. Quetzal says as you wish. In any case, your pondering of this won't be harmful to you. Billy says okay, then bye, and see you soon. Quetzal says until we meet again, my friend. Until we meet again. Billy says why so solemn, my son. Quetzal says I feel your pain. Billy says I still manage it. Bye, bye. Quetzal says until we meet again. The end.